चलो लेट स्टार्ट विद सुपर क्विक रिविजन ऑफ द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इन कस्टम दैट इज टाइप्स ऑफ ड्यूटी वेरी नाइस चैप्टर इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर कंसेप्चुअली वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ये so in this particular chapter we are going to study about different types of duties which are levied under customs okay different type of duties which are levied under customs that will help us for the purpose of doing the calculations also and more about it okay combined type of questions we have done many questions for this in the class also and more questions on this can be asked along with the valuation chapter yes let's start with it everyone simple 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 now first of all what are the types of duties which are levied okay so first one is your basic custom duty next one is your igst gst compensation says this we have been discussing then there will be something called as countervailing duty on subsidized article safeguard measures or safeguard including safeguard duty anti dumping duty social welfare surcharge agriculture infrastructure and development says protective duties and so on and so forth okay these are the type of duties we have just seen an overview these are the types of duties which can be levied okay starting with the first one first one is going to be your basic custom duty we had already seen in the previous to in the first chapter of customs that <coughs> sorry section Section number twelve is your charging section. Yes, section number twelve levies the uh, is the taxable section is the charging section which says that on the assessable value which is determined under section fourteen on that basic custom duty will be applicable as per the tariff. Okay, as per the tariff which is maintained in the uh, first schedule and the second schedule of the Customs Tariff Act nineteen seventy five. So first schedule was talking about import duty. Second schedule was talking about the Uh, export duties etc so as per the rate as per the classification we we had done in the last chapter on that basis your rate of customs duty will be determined and it will be calculated on that value okay either the standard rate will be chosen or the preferential rate will be chosen and on that basis and on that basis the uh, uh, this rate will be determined and we are going to uh, calculate the basic customs duty which is going to be payable okay now do you recollect one was your standard rate and the other one was preferential rate yes yeah, so for preferential rate for preferential rate government had told that if you are importing for some, from some preferential areas okay from some preferential areas which have been notified by the government you cannot say that this is a preferential area okay if the central government has notified that this is a preferential area if you import from there then lesser custom duty will be applicable then in that case you can take the benefit of preferential rate of duty government will not so motto give you the benefit of preferential rate of duty you will have to go and make a claim with the government that sir i have fulfilled all the conditions and now please give me the benefit of this preferential rate of duty four conditions are applicable in that case first of all we will have to go and make a specific claim secondly we should also claim that these goods have been manufactured or produced in that preferential area third one that area should be notified by the government as a preferential area and fourth one the origin of the goods the origin of the goods will have to be determined as per the Uh, rules made under section 4 of the customs tariff act if all these four conditions are getting fulfilled then only preferential rate of duty will be applicable if you do not uh, fulfill those conditions then the goods will be liable to standard rate of duty are you clear with this okay so this was applicable this was normally applicable for your uh, imports basic custom duty is applicable at the time of imports ma'am what about exports you never spoke about second schedule to the customs tariff act so second schedule basically we know that there are very few products on which duty is applicable at the time of export okay because we want to promote export we cannot export taxes etc so so there are only very few products which the government does not want you to export on that export duty will be applicable at the rate which is prescribed under the second schedule of the customs tariff act are you clear till here everyone now let's go ahead to the next section next section is section number 37 important section section number 37 talks about the igst okay we have discussed something about this earlier also let's rediscuss it so now we know that we know that suppose if you are purchasing any goods here in india then at that time gst uh, cgst sgst igst udgst etc can be applicable so they are telling just to bring it at par okay just to bring it at par with domestic market they are telling that at the time of import igst will also apply okay so igst will be maximum at the rate of 40% okay maximum that that we have studied under the igst act okay uh, if suppose i am importing this particular product okay and the rate of gst on this particular product in india is 18% then igst will also be levied at the rate of 18% means they have maintained that parity 
right now this igst will be calculated on which value okay igst let's say 18 percent let's say uh, 28 percent whatever it is it will be calculated on which value okay so it will be calculated on a value which is determined under section 38 or which is determined under section 38a okay if the goods were kept in the warehouse and from there if it is cleared then it is section number 38a otherwise normally normally you first determine the value as per section number 38 and on that value on that value igst will be applicable ma'am can you please tell that how do we calculate this value as per section number 38 yes okay one more thing igst and one more tax called as gst compensation says okay both of these igst is coming under section 37 and gst compensation says is coming under section number 39 okay now listen uh, i am taking two things together okay just try to understand Okay, because the meaning is same, that's why I'm taking two things together. IGST is calculated on what? Okay, IGST is calculated on the value as per section 38 or the value as per section number 38A. On that, we calculate the IGST. Similarly, GST compensation says, now first of all, uh, we have already studied about this, that GST compensation says is levied on some luxury products or some sin products etc because because of implementation of gst there was loss to the states so to recover or to compensate the states on some products there is this gst compensation says so they are telling that now if you are importing the same products from the other country then at that time if you would have purchased it from india then also gst compensation says would have been applicable now if you are importing the same goods at that time also gst compensation says will be applicable on those particular products Okay, and now they have extended this GST compensation says till 31st March 2026. Levy has been extended till 31st March 2020 means they are going to collect it till 31st March 2026 till now. It can be extended further also. Anyway, now this GST compensation says, okay, GST compensation says will also be calculated as a percentage only. Okay, so this will be calculated on the value, okay, on the value as determined under section 310 or value determined under section 310A. IGST was calculatable on 38 or 38A. GST compensation is to be calculated on value determined under section 310 or 310A. Okay, now for your simplicity, let me tell you calculation under 38 and calculation under 310 is same. Okay, similarly, calculation under 38A. Everyone, are you with me? Yes, calculation under 38A and calculation under 310A is same. So, can we also conclude that IGST and GST compensation says is leviable on the same value. That value can be as per 38 also or that value can be as per 310 also. Okay, in case of warehouse goods, that value can be as per section 38A also or that value can be as per section 310A also. Okay, so always remember IGST and GST compensation says is always calculated on the same value. Ma'am, but how to calculate? Okay, now let's say the goods are not the warehouse goods, means the goods were imported and directly cleared for home consumption. So, they are telling that whatever is your customs value as per section number 14, customs valuation which we are yet to do, okay, customs value as per section number 14 plus on that add all the custom duties. Okay, on that add all the customs duty, it can be your basic custom duty, it can be social welfare surcharge, any other type of safeguard duty, protective, anything. Okay, but except, except what you are calculating, except IGST and GST compensation says. Okay, so value plus all the customs duty, add all these things, this will be your value as per section number 38. On this value, calculate the IGST and on the same value, calculate the GST compensation says. Are you understanding this? Yes? Okay. <clears throat> so, this is how this is how the calculation is done. First, take the value plus add all the customs duty. You will get the value as per section number 38. Okay. Accessible value. Accessible value as per section number 38. On that value, IGST is also levied and on the same value, GST compensation says is also levied. Are you clear with this? Yes? Now, 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 if the goods were kept in warehouse, then section 38 or 310 is not applicable. Then section 38A or section 310A is applicable if the goods were kept in the warehouse. Okay, do you recollect we had studied it in GST that if the goods are deposited in the warehouse, means I imported the goods, I deposited the goods in the warehouse, till that time there is no duty payable. Okay, after that, I did not clear it for home consumption, but when the goods were kept in the warehouse, from there itself I have sold it to someone else. Okay, from there itself. So, that was not considered as a supply. So, I am free from all the taxes. 
okay the person who is ultimately going to clear it from home consumption that person is required to pay the custom duty now on what value that person will pay the customs duty on that on what value that person on what value will that person pay the igst gst compensation says etc okay so here they are telling that this we have already studied in one of the chapters earlier in the gst so they are telling that either the value determined as per customs okay that is the one which we just now discussed okay or we can say the value determined as per section number 38 that is your basic customs value plus all the customs duty okay except igst and gst compensation says value as per section number 38 or the transaction value at which i have sold it to that person in the warehouse itself okay out of these two whichever is higher okay so customs valuation customs valuation as per section 38 or the transaction value at which i have sold to that particular person out of these two whichever is higher on this value on this value your igst and gst compensation says will be applicable but when are we supposed to do this thing we are supposed to do this thing only when we are talking about duties on warehoused goods okay if nothing is specified then by default calculate it as per section number 38 are you clear till here everyone yes okay then after that going on to the additional duties now your three section three subsections are coming up section 31 section 33 and section number 35 here what are they trying to do they are trying to levy additional duties on us just because just because in india if suppose you purchase it in india or suppose if you manufacture it in india then there are some excise duty levyable then there are some vat levyable on certain products on certain products still there is vat and excise right so if you are purchasing those goods in india then vat or excise will be levyable so if you are importing that same goods from the other country then to compensate and to bring it at par with the domestic market they have levied additional duties under section 31 33 and 35 are you clear with this okay now there are very few articles on which excise is levyable let's say if we want to purchase uh, if we want to purchase diesel okay on that excise duty is applicable okay let's say on that excise duty is applicable so if you are purchasing petrol here in india you are required to pay excise duty so they are telling that if you are importing petrol at that time also at that time we cannot levy excise but we will levy additional duty under section number 31 okay so 31 is basically a duty to compensate with the excise duty are you clear with this okay then then going on to the next section similar section that is your section number 33 this one okay this is your countervailing special additional duty so here they are telling that sometimes it can so happen that sometimes it can so happen that you are purchasing a raw material okay you are purchasing a raw, let's say petroleum is purchased as your raw material for because you wanted to make some grease out of it or you wanted to make some lubricant oil out of it so can we say that raw material would have suffered excise here in india so they are telling so they are telling that so they are telling that when you are importing it from the other country okay when you are importing that lubricant oil for example from the other country at that time also this uh, some compensating duty will be applicable on you okay so basically because it is levied here in india okay because it is levied because excise is levied here in india or because vat is levied here in india if you are importing the same product and at that time we will levy this duty under section number 3 okay and last one is your section number 35 this is talking about vat if there is a particular product which is suffering vat which is suffering sales tax or which is suffering any local tax in india on any particular product and now if you are importing the same product from the other country don't worry you are not going to get any relief from vat local tax etc we are going to collect a tax under section number 35 as special additional duty are you clear with this yes okay then going on to the next section that is section number 67 Six, seven, six, section number six and section number seven, which uh, says that section number six talks about revenue duties. Okay, revenue duties is such a duty which is levied by the central government to increase the revenue of the government. Okay, just because it wants to increase its own revenue for that purpose, it can levy something called as revenue duties. Okay, and then there is something called as protective duties. Okay, protective duties can be levied if the government wants to give protection to the domestic industry. if we go on importing 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 then in that case can we say our domestic market our domestic market will be affected because of that and if our domestic market is affected then that will cause a serious injury to the market to the economy etc so in that case they can levy the protective duties are you clear with this so that can be imposed by the government 
Now going on to the next two sections that is section number 8 and section number 8A. Section number 8 talks about export duty. Section number 8A talks about import duties where they say that government there is emergency power. Okay, government has, central government has emergency power to impose export duty or to enhance export duty. Means this will generally happen when the government does not want us to export the products. Generally, this happens whenever there is any shortage of any products in the domestic market. So, government will say that why don't you fulfill the domestic market first. So, they will tell us to fulfill the domestic market first and for that purpose, they can either impose export duties on particular product or they can even enhance the export duty by passing a notification in the official gazette. Okay, the product on which it is wanting to impose or enhance the export duty that may or may not be specified in the schedule. Okay, if it is specified in the schedule, well and good. If it is not specified in the schedule, now you can add it in that schedule also. No problems in that. Are you clear with this? Yes. Or alternatively, by way of a special notification also, you can um, enhance that uh, export duty. Right? right? Now, section number 8A. Section number 8A says that similarly, central government also has the power to impose import duty or to enhance the import duty. But for that purpose, Achha, central government will have to pass a notification in the official gazette and the product on which we want to enhance the import duty that should be mentioned in the first schedule. First schedule to the customs tariff act then only the central government can do so and both the sections can be done only when central government is of the opinion that it is necessary to do so in public interest. Yes. Okay. Then after that, going on to the most three important sections of the chapter, section number 8, starting with section number 8B. Section number 8B talks about safeguard measures, 9 talks about countervailing duty on subsidized articles and, and 9A talks about anti-dumping duty. Okay, these three sections are super duper important, 8B, 9 and 9A. Okay, you can also mark in your book. These are your three types of duties. Okay, first one is your section number 8B. Section number 8B talks about, section number 8B talks about safeguard measures. Okay, now the safeguard measures is a very general thing where central government after conducting inquiry, if it is of the opinion that there is a particular article, let's say this article, there is a particular article which is being imported in increased quantity and because imports are happening in increased quantities, then in such cases, it can cause injury to the domestic market therefore the central government can by issuing a notification in the official gazette okay by issuing a notification in the official gazette it can levy the safeguard measure okay ma'am what do you mean by safeguard measures so two to three things can be done under the safeguard measures first one the government can impose safeguard duty means it will impose some tax okay second at the time for the purpose of import okay second it can do is it can apply something called as tariff rate quota okay tariff rate quota is government will tell to the other country that if you are importing the goods in india till this quantity then it is acceptable we will not levy any safeguard duty at the time of import for this importer okay but if you are exporting the other country if it is exporting means we are importing more than this particular quota then in that case normal rate will also be apl applicable plus safeguard duty will also apply okay so we will want both of them we will want the want the importer also and we will want the exporter also okay what will happen if we want the exporter can we say if india levies more duties on that that exporter will also become very cautious because now he can start losing contracts from india this export contracts right okay so now so safeguard duty safeguard duty will be imposed okay and the next one this tariff rate quota, tariff rate quota can be made applicable or any other measures with the central government can think fit. Okay, all these things can be done. Then after that, then after that, whenever the safeguard duty is levied on that particular article, it will be levied for a period of four years, which can be further extended by a period of six years. Okay, it can be further extended by a period of six years. Now, there are three exceptions. Okay, this is very, very important. There are three exemptions when safeguard measures will not be made applicable okay three cases where safeguard measures will not be made applicable now they are telling that if india is importing a particular article from a developing nation not a developed or underdeveloped from a developing nation and share of imports from such developing nations uh, does not exceed three percent means it is maximum three percent of the total imports of that article in our country means they are telling that this is very negligible 
okay so it should not affect india's domestic market because the share is hardly 3% so safeguard duty should not be levied okay but if you are importing from multiple developing nations each developing nation share does not exceed 3% but all of them taken together also if it does not exceed 9% okay if it does not exceed 9% we do not have any problem okay they are telling this is still very less are you clear with this yes and the last one if the imports are done by 100% eou or sez units because if they are importing they are anyway going to use it for the purpose of export this is normal by default government's assumption okay so in that case safeguard measures will not be imposed but but two exceptions for this point okay two exceptions means if it is specifically told by the government still impose the safeguard duty then we will have to impose the safeguard duty or if this eou or sez is clearing the goods in dta okay if they are clearing the goods in dta then in that case uh, safeguard duty safeguard measures will have to be imposed are you clear with this okay these three exemptions you have to remember many times questions have been framed on this particular part okay and last point which is talking about provisional assessment now sometimes it can so happen that government central government or customs officer etc they are just doing a preliminary inquiry they are doing determination they are finding out whether should we levy safeguard duty or not okay if we should levy safeguard duty or not during that time if the central government is of the opinion that provisionally provisionally we should levy okay then it can be levied maximum for a period of 200 days it will get vacated after a period of 200 days and suppose if finally it was determined by the government finally if it was determined by the government that it should not have been levied then we will refund back the duty which we had taken from them are you clear with this this was all about so basically because imports were being done in very high quantity and which was causing injury to the domestic market for that purpose for that purpose we levied the safeguard measures within safeguard measures your uh, safeguard duty can be levied your uh, what do you say uh, tariff rate quota can be made applicable and any other measures which can be specified by the central right then the next one that is your section number nine again important section number nine also talks about countervailing duty on subsidized articles okay don't confuse it with the special additional duty of section number 3 313335 don't confuse just remember this word on subsidized articles countervailing duty on subsidized article now here they are telling here what are they telling okay here they are telling that uh, let's say uh, india is there and for example i'm just telling you let's take the example of japan okay india is importing some goods from japan okay because india is getting because india is getting at a lower price than the domestic market so we say that okay okay no problem please give it to us okay then we try to find out why are we getting at lower price okay so we came to know that japan government okay or any financial body in japan is providing subsidy to its exporter means japan government is telling that either we will give you some grants or we will waive off your loan but you do exports so can we say ex that japan exporter is getting benefit from its own government and because of that benefit it is giving to us at a lower price okay so because of subsidy we are able to import at a very lower price so government says that to the extent of the subsidy okay to the extent of the subsidy anti dumping duty will be levied on you okay anti uh, sorry countervailing duty on subsidized article will be levied in your case and maximum amount that can be levied <laughs> is equal to the amount of subsidy benefit which has been passed on to India. Are you clear with this? Then in that case, this countervailing duty on subsidized articles will become applicable. Now, there can be something called as anti-circumvention measures. Anti-circumvention measures is such case when we are trying to make fool out of government. Okay, or we are trying to, you know, twist with the government. So, they are telling that suppose if I try to import Okay, I try to import by altering the name of the article, description of the article or if I try to fake to the government that no, no, this is not imported from Japan, this is imported from some other country or I imported it in unassembled form so on the CVD should not be applicable etc. etc. Then if I am trying to make fool out of government and government understands that I am doing this just to avoid the countervailing duty, then central government can take steps and it can apply countervailing duty on me. Right, and one more point here is absorption of countervailing duty. Very nice point. Okay, absorption of countervailing duty, where they say that now, now we know that if we are if we import from Japan, and uh, countervailing duty will be applicable on me. 
okay so now what japan did was japan said i will imp i will export you i will export you at even more lesser price okay now what will happen if it is importing at even more lesser price and even if countervailing duty is applicable i am still indifferent because my basic price only got reduced okay so can we say can we say this export price has absorbed the effect of countervailing duty okay let's say earlier it was coming at 100 okay let's say earlier it was coming at 100 and countervailing duty was applicable as 20 rupees for example so cost for me was 120 rupees now what the other government has done the other government uh, the, or the other country's exporter says that i will give you at 80 okay i will give you at 80 even if even if they levy even if they levy a countervailing duty of let's say 20 rupees for example then in that case your cost will still be 100 means we are trying to absorb okay or let's say now it is exporting it to me at 80 and government says that 40 rupees countervailing duty will apply so again the cost for me is 120 only so can we say they have reduced the basic price only because of which i am not feeling the pinch okay because of which i am not feeling the pinch of this countervailing duty so 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 they are telling if government if they come to know if government is doing the inquiry and if it is of the opinion that absorption of countervailing duty has taken place where countervailing duty imposed is made ineffective okay is made ineffective then the government has the power to modify okay it has the power to modify the countervailing duty okay means more amount of countervailing duty can also be made applicable right and next point at this point we have already done maximum amount of countervailing duty is the amount of subsidy but in this absorption case the amount of subsidy can also be increased by the government Achha. and last non applicability of countervailing duty we studied three exceptions in case of uh, protective duty also safeguard duty also 3%, 9% and EOU, SEZ. Now, here they are telling that countervailing duty on subsidized article will not be applicable in only one case. That is when the import is being done by 100% EOU or units located in SEZ. Okay, because they are going to anyway use it for the purpose of export. But two exceptions in that also, same two points. Same two points. What were the same two points? That if, that if, uh, government specifically says that no still it will be applicable still the countervailing duty will be applicable so it will be levied or if that 100 percent eou or unit in sez is going to clear the goods under dta okay then in such cases then in such cases you will not get the benefit from the countervailing duty are you clear till here everyone yes and whenever this countervailing duty is levied it will be valid for a period of five years which can be further extended for a period of Yes, and definitely provisional countervailing duty. Suppose if suppose if uh, there is an inquiry etc. is going on and if government is of the opinion that there should be a provisional assessment which should be done. So, central government can impose a provisional countervailing duty maximum up to the amount of subsidy and later depending upon the final assessment, the amount can increase or the amount can decrease. So, either more amount will be recovered from you or the excessive amount will be refunded back to you. Also, also, okay, again important answer. Okay, again, very, very important answer. If government is of the opinion, okay, if government is of the opinion that there is an injury which is being caused to the domestic industry because of this massive imports in a relatively short period, okay, and to, you know, so that this injury should not happen again and again, so that this injury should not happen again and again for that purpose, if government is of the, and government is able to check from the history of the importer that he has been doing massive imports in a relatively short time so this duty can be imposed retrospectively also means today you can pass an order today the government can pass an order for imposition of countervailing duty retrospectively but not beyond 90 days okay not beyond means we cannot go behind 90 days are you clear with this and the last important answer here is your anti-dumping duty section number 9 a anti-dumping duty means okay and anti-dumping anti duty specifically says that if there is a lot of dumping of goods happening here in India. So, can we say here uh, the supply is more? If the supply is more, then definitely uh, uh, and the demand is less, obviously, then in such cases it will affect the domestic market badly. Okay, now, 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 uh, why or how to identify that it is dumping and why should there be an anti dumping duty leviable on the same? Okay, so here they are telling that let's say India is there and let's say Japan is there. Okay, there is a particular product which is coming from Japan to India. Okay, Japan is selling in its own country at let's say 500 rupees for example. Okay, Japan is selling in its own country at 500 but it is giving it to me. 
it is giving it to me at 400 so can we say there is a dumping margin here okay there is a dumping margin of 100 rupees so maximum up to 100 rupees maximum up to 100 rupees anti dumping duty can be levied here in india okay did you understand the difference between countervailing duty on subsidized article and anti dumping duty in countervailing duty on subsidized article why was i able to get it at a lower price because that country's government had given subsidy here this country has not given any subsidy still i am getting it at a lower price so in that case anti dumping duty in that case anti dumping duty will be levied are you clear with this everyone yes now how much amount maximum how much amount of anti dumping duty can be levied maximum amount is equal to the dumping margin okay means the price at which it is sold in its own country and the price at which i have got here in india whatever is the difference that is called as the dumping margin or that is called as the margin of dumping so theoretically they have told us that maximum amount of anti dumping duty that can be levied that can be levied is equal to lower of lower of margin of dumping or injury margin okay margin of dumping or injury margin whichever is lower ma'am what do you mean by margin of dumping so margin of dumping is normal selling price okay by the exporter by the exporter normally the exporter sells at what price okay normal selling price and minus the selling price to India means at what price or import price to India at what price it has been imported okay then that will be called as the dumping margin or or injury margin whichever is lower okay or injury margin whichever is lower now what do you mean by this injury margin okay injury margin is the amount of injury caused to the domestic market here okay that is that is that is that is uh, at what price is it normally available in India? Okay, at what price it is normally available in India? Means if a domestic person goes and purchases that particular article, at what price is it available in India? Minus the landed price in India. Okay, minus if we import it, normally if we import it, what is the landed price? So can we say if normally that product is available here in India at or that product is normally sold in India at 150 rupees and if you import then the landed price comes to 120 then can we say this 30 is the injury which is caused to the domestic market so this 30 or the transaction done with a particular importer that particular price whichever is lower this is the amount okay this is the amount of anti-dumping duty which can be levied on a particular person and yes it was decided in the case of reliance industries okay it was in, uh, decided in the case of uh, uh, reliance industries that this normal price in india okay or the term is called as fair selling price fair selling price in india means normally that product is available in india at what price this fair selling price can be only a single price means you cannot say you cannot say that no sometimes it is 150 sometimes it is 140 no that there is going to be a single uh, fair selling price in India for the same product and landed value is accessible value plus all the customs duty except CVD, SAD and the special duties. So basically customs duty and the basic customs duty uh, will be considered for the purpose of landed value. Right. Again, if you want, I'll just repeat it everyone. How do we calculate the anti-dumping duty? Anti-dumping duty is lower of Okay, anti-dumping duty is lower of dumping margin, dumping margin or injury margin, whichever is lower. Are you clear with this? Dumping margin or injury margin, whichever is lower. Dumping margin means Japan sells in its own country at 500, but Japan is giving to Arpita at 400. 100 rupees is the dumping margin. Okay, injury margin is the amount, is the value of injury cost to India. Okay, injury cost to India means what is whatever is a fair selling price in India of that particular product. Okay, a minus minus the landed price that becomes your injury margin. Out of these two, whichever is lower, this will be the amount of your anti-dumping duty which will be levied in the in case of import okay now suppose if you if there is a, a if circumvention of anti-dumping duty is happening 
okay if circumvention if circumvention of anti dumping duty is happening then what will happen means remember we had studied about this if we are trying to alter the name of the article description of the article um, you know composition of the article or if we are trying to change the origin uh, of uh, import of the exports or if we are trying to show that we have called it in unassembled form or dissembled form or any other thing uh, where we have tried to fool the government because of which the effect is getting ineffective it means the anti dumping duty is becoming ineffective then in such cases government will say that don't worry we are not dump so government will levy the anti dumping duty in such case and same point of absorption is applicable here also which we had discussed for the last type of duty similarly provisional anti dumping duty is applicable here also that if the government wants then the pro then provisionally okay then provisionally the government can impose uh, this anti dumping duty on us and later when the final determination is done then either the differential will be recovered from us or the excessive amount will be refunded back from us and anti dumping duty is not applicable same exception as the last point anti dumping duty will not be applicable in case of 100% eu or scz except in those two circumstances again this duty can be levied retrospectively uh, if there is a history of dumping or if there is a massive dumping happening here in india so 90 days prior that retrospectively it can be made applicable whenever this duty is imposed it will be valid for a period of 5 years plus it can be extended for a further period of 5 years are you clear with this yes and section number 9 a okay section number 9 a say talks about refund of anti dumping duty means if suppose we have already paid anti dumping duty to the government okay and then you prove it to the officer that sir i have paid more than the dumping margin okay i have paid more than the dumping margin then if the government is satisfied then whatever is the excess amount that will be refunded back to you are you clear tell your everyone yes major part of the chapter is done last few sections let's complete it everyone yes section number 9b section number 9b says that 9 or 9a that is countervailing duty on subsidized article or 9a that is your anti dumping duty should not be levied in few circumstances now what are those circumstances in which it should not be levied so first one they are telling that first of all both of them together should not be levied for the same dumping or for the same subsidy on that particular article for the same situation both of them should not be levied together okay next next they are telling that it should not be just levied because it should not be levied just because those articles are getting duty exemptions in the other country let's say the other country is giving export duty benefits so we are getting at a lower price just because of this just because of this don't levy cvd or anti dumping duty right then don't levy these duties if you are importing from a member country of world trade organization with which india has got a favored agreement okay unless unless it is proved that unless it is proved that it is causing material injury to the country are you clear with this yes and last last point that they are telling here is this provisional duty should not be levied unless preliminary findings uh have been made of subsidy or dumping so first do a preliminary examination that is it a case of anti dumping duty or is it a case of subsidized articles etc then only start the provisional uh assessment or then only levy the provisional duties right now next section next section is section number 9c section number 9c talks about the appeal okay what the section number 9c says that if if any particular person is aggrieved because of the duty is levied above then you can go and file an appeal to the uh, sestat that is customs excess and uh, excise and service tax appellate tribunal okay you can uh, appeal fee is equal to 15000 rupees and whenever you are going and making a further application for you know uh, rectification for grant of stay etc at that time the fee will be 500 so you can go and present your case before the sestat within a time period of 90 days okay within a time period of 90 days 90 days from which day 90 days from which day 90 days from the date of determination means when it was determined by the authorities that this levy should be done on you from that day within a time period of 90 days you can go and file an appeal this period of 90 days can be further extended if there is any sufficient cause and then the final decision will be taken by the sestat are you clear till here yes 
and then going on to the last two points ne next one is your social welfare surcharge okay now earlier education cess was applicable then education cess was removed so in compensation of education cess okay in compensation of education cess they have levied this social welfare surcharge this is calculated at the rate of 10% on the basic custom duty not on the value okay on the basic custom duty it will be calculated and whatever amount government will collect they are saying that they will use it for the purpose of financing education health social security and all those things are you clear with this again i am repeating social welfare surcharge will be applicable at the rate of 10% only on the basic custom duty amount and not other duty okay but for the purpose of calculating igst gst compensation says later on for that purpose all the customs duty will be included yes and the last one that is aidc aidc that is agriculture infrastructure and development says agriculture infrastructure and development says so they are telling that this is levied only on imports of certain specified goods at a notified rate okay example if you are importing not to be remembered i'm just telling you if we are importing apples if we are importing kabuli chana if we are importing uh, coal urea silver silver dory uh, gold gold dory etc whatever are notified by the government at that time this aidc is applicable okay this will be calculated on the value of section number 14 the value on which bcd basic custom duty is applicable on that value itself this aidc will become applicable are you clear with this this is not applicable for all this is applicable only on the notified products at the notified rate but social welfare surcharge will be applicable in all the cases i hope i am very very clear till here yes and you were able to understand it properly Yes.